sick. Okay, cool. I, I, I think we're all going. Okay. Yeah, we're recording. Uh, how, how are you? Doing? How you doing, cool. man? Cool, man. Oh, I appreciate, I appreciate doing this. Yeah, my That's pleasure. Super cool, you. Here, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna keep checking the, this camera because it shuts off every twenty minutes. Oh, really? Okay. Because it's like a, you know, um, older camera. I did. This is uh, the camera that Stan shot his first videos on. Oh, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Donated it to me. Nice. Yeah, uh, for the podcast, but. Good old um, Stan. Good old. Stan. Well, I, I guess I, the way I usually start this is like the point of all this stuff is not to talk about like technique or yeah. how to get a job in the industry or any of that kind of stuff. It's more about the why of doing art in okay. the first place. And I meet so many people who are like, you know, like I talk to art students all the time who are like, how do I get into art school? How do I get into, you know, how do I get my dream job? And yeah. everyone I've ever talked to, they talk about how it's like, once you get the dream job, it's not like your life is over. Right. It's, it's not like you're finished. Yeah. You have tons of other things to do after that. Yeah. You know? And for somebody like you, you've designed some really iconic characters that, you know, were parts of ch people's childhoods yeah. in a really big way. And I'd imagine that, like, you know, like it doesn't stop there, the fulfillment. Like, I'm, I, I'd imagine you, you, you keep wanting to, like, go deeper and find other ways of, of being fulfilled. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think that it's kind of really changes um, for, for everyone in ways, like even just for myself right now, I feel like there's almost a part of me now that feels like I've truly, um, it's, it sounds weird, but it feels like I have nothing left to prove for myself, yeah, right. you know, I feel like, and, that, and that's where like that journey of art comes in, where I th feel like oftentimes artists are always chasing that trying to prove something trying to do something trying to get to that next level and they are always doing that and I think what's happened to me was that my teaching uh, is really um, and trying to impact and change people's lives for some reason whatever the reason I feel like I've been put on this earth for that reason yeah. to, uh, from the time I found a sketchbook in my backyard when I was six years old which led me on this journey to where okay well now you're gonna do this and you're gonna do this and I've fallen into all these different areas and impacted people's lives in these different realms where I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do my I'm not supposed to be here just to be the the best draftsman and just be that that one and get awards and be this thing and keep moving up and just ju just doing art and trying to better my art and better myself I feel like I'm supposed to be here to try to help guide other people along their journey so I feel like I've been given a lot of signs and been shown a lot of things and led to reading certain books and meeting certain people and all these things have been part of that so myself now and I've actually just recently changed my careers yeah. you know my whole career path is like now I'm working as a um, uh, recruiter right. for for Disney television animation because I I find more joy helping other people find what they need to do. Right. Like that's where I realized for myself, what brings me joy? Sitting there getting a perfect piece of artwork and something like, oh my God, working so many hours. Oh my God, look at this. Now what to show to who? Right. For what, in my, where I am now. But I feel like, oh, if I can do something like, hey, I can help you. Yeah find what you're gonna do again the grass is always right. greener absolutely it always will be you know that's 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 yeah. what you were kind of like referring to it's just like you get yeah. to a certain level but it's like there's still you know you think there's more sometimes absolutely well, and I, I went to watts and you know i wanted to be a concept when i was i got into art because when i was 16 i had a friend who worked at blizzard who was you know like designing diablo and stuff there yeah. and he was like really encouraged me to get into art and from that age i was like obsessed with the glory side of art you know yeah, and I, yeah. I, I like trained i wanted i went to the watts atelier and took workshops everywhere and, yeah you know I, I really wanted to be one of the, the like legendary artists that everyone right. talked about and as i'm getting further into the stuff i'm realizing i like the act of doing art way less than just being part of the community yeah. and, and enjoying it and i think i struggled you know i'm still struggling with it but i was struggling with it more in the past because i tied more of my identity to being an artist than I probably should have. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like people saw me, or I wanted to see myself as somebody who, like a Kim Jong Gi or something. Yeah. Right. Know? Right. Like like a master. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that that tying of identity to anything is kind of like I, again from your perspective, it's like 
you make these iconic characters and it's like you either keep chasing that or you, you right know, or you don't right? yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly I, I could have kept trying to chase that kept trying to get the jobs at the studios keep trying oh god i gotta get on the next yeah. one you know like they always say you're only as good as your last yeah. thing whatever that is your last acting job your last piece of music your last right. art you're only as good. but to, to who yeah. you know the thing that always is alluding to me and always funny to me when you do something like i'll go to comic-con i've just put out my new book that i yeah. did I go to Comic Con and people. That's awesome. What's next? Yeah. What's next? Right. I just did this already, right. man. I just did this. I, can I yeah, have some time? I, I you know, why, yeah, yeah. Why is it always next? Why, yeah. But that's always the, this chasing. What's next? What's next? Right. What's next? And um, I think it's fascinating. And sometimes, again, you got to figure it out for yourself if that's what. And, and that works for people. Some yeah. people are always chasing what's next because they because they need that and they need to keep getting that next thing. And a lot of people are chasing a job title. A lot of people are chasing their their income. Yeah. You know how much money uh, you know are they making for this? Um, and but then they miss out on sometimes all the other things: the mental health, yeah. the 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 ability to be f with friends and family, the right. ability just to have free time, the ability to do all these things. So you got to be you got to be careful. Yeah. Well, know? and I found that like whether you're the most famous artist on the planet or you're a student the act of doing art is always the same yeah. like you're in your bedroom by yourself sure. at a or yeah. at an easel or something just yeah. painting you know yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how many people like it because 90 percent of the time it's going to be the same no matter what yeah you know? right yeah um and i think in order to be like one of those master draftsmen you need to love being by yourself yeah. more than anything yeah you know you really do you really do and there's a huge sacrifice that comes with it you know there's a sacrifice i remember before i had kids i got two kids now they're all growing up but before i even had kids i'm like how does an artist that is, takes it seriously be a good dad yeah. so i was reading up on rockwell i was reading up on uh, just uh, Charles Ryan. Schultz yeah, and yeah. all these people. So Norman Rockwell was a horrible dad. Yeah. You know, uh, Charles Schultz, you know, Snoopy but wasn't yeah. a good dad. Um, Hank Ketchum, you know, Dennis the Menace. So these guys that they, they were idols, you know, to me. But yeah. again, it was the, the pursuit of their own, the, just their their work again being alone and having to do that i don't have time i got this meet this deadline right. where they sacrifice that relationship with their kids who eventually grew up and could, would say right now my dad was a horrible dad and yeah. she's like i never wanted that yeah. you know i always made that's why i stopped working in the studios about 15 years ago yeah. so, so i can watch my kids grow up so you can we make these choices but it's like well what is it you know for you you know we have to make that choice ourselves absolutely well, and I, that's something i realized along the way is that like when i was really wanting to get into the industry or whatever you want to call it i started to treat people worse it wasn't intentional but i just yeah. wouldn't like i wouldn't give certain people the time of day or yeah. like i would just want to spend more time by myself and i became a little bit of a recluse yeah. you know yeah. at the price of my social life and mental health and yeah i started to look at those guys like norman walkwell and yeah. you know like all those people, yeah. like I read about Linedecker as well. Oh yeah, you know he had some rough stuff yeah. happen to him oh, as well. Yeah. And it's like, is it worth it to be that kind of master in order to just have that glory? And I think the answer is, I think no. No. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No. For what? Again, what's the what's the purpose really at the end? Of the, I mean, again, but what are you really wanting? Is that so that people, you, what do you want people to talk about you? You want yeah. people to, I mean, you know, when you're gone from this planet, you know, what, what's the, what's like, I don't know. It comes, know. it comes to, it comes to the ego. You know? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It all comes down to that. You yeah. Know? And I, I don't know. I, I feel like over the past year or two year or three years, I've adopted like almost like an optimistic nihilism. You yeah. Know? It's like, we're in one park in one part of the country and there are tens of thousands of people taking their dogs on walks, yeah. millions, billions yeah. of people yeah. all living their lives. And all you're trying to do is to get a million people to be talking about you. Right. Like right. You, you couldn't walk down the street and most people wouldn't know who JC Leindecker is. Right. Oh yeah. You know, no. they, they probably know Norman Rockwell, but only one or two of his paintings. Right. You know? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and unfortunately most, most people, most, students that I even work with today, they don't even know who Norman Rockwell is, you know, you can, in any classroom today, the Norman Rockwell, who's that, yeah. you know, then can, they're not chasing that. And I just feel like actually what we were chasing at one point for the draftsmanship aspect for advertising when before photography and all that, there, there was that pursuit of you had to be good. If you wanted to work, you had to be great. Yeah. You know, these were the guys who were doing all the catalogs and the book illustrations. You had to get yeah. to that level. 
But today, I just feel like people just don't look at it anymore that way. We can just see an animation and even just illustration and graphic design and everything else. There's just stuff where people are just doing so well and phenomenal. And did they spend all those years slaving away trying to get that draftsmanship level to that pinnacle? Right. And did it benefit? And today, again, the world's changed. It's evolving to where... Are you going to be appreciated as much as you were back then? I, I don't think so. It's not. It's just not the same. I mean, we yeah. we still do. I think uh, as us, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're like we like value that. Right. We know we when we were learning that grew up. That's just like oh my god to be able to draw a hand like that yeah. or a body or whatever it is. Right. Always you're sort of chasing that. You know, you always want to do great work, but yeah. for some some things happen. You know, and unfortunately, yeah. it's just kind of a, a lost art form. Well, and I think even beyond that, it's like it, it's almost like a blessing in a sense because yeah. like you always hear about celebrities, you know, yeah. massive celebrities kind yeah. of losing their minds oh, a yeah. little bit because oh, yeah. they don't they're glorified. You know, yeah. I, there's that story of Michael Jackson renting out an entire supermarket and then having actors play people in the supermarket in, oh, order, yeah. in order for him to f you know feel get, normal. Yeah, get the act like no one paid attention. Yeah, just to wow. see what it's like. Wow, you know? and it's wow. like That's or, crazy. or or Marie Antoinette in Versailles, uh, she built a. a like a fake village and had peasants acting as oh my peasants word. and then she would milk cows for fun and it's like that there's something about yeah. that great yeah know, that that you know like i think people crave acceptance and crave being part of the group yeah. and you know um being glorified in that sense is yeah. not it, it, it's almost not desirable yeah at all. yeah absolutely I, th I think like one of the things that i've heard and i think you know oprah winfrey had said it but i don't know where it came from but she's right when she and i heard it from her and that's why i'm quoting her it's like she just said you know what everyone wants is everyone's looking for is to be seen and heard yeah you know that's what people want people want to be heard people want to be seen and then, yeah, you get to that point of the being put on the pedestal. Now you're idolized, you know. Yeah. But then when that f crumbles and falls, your whole world is destroyed because your whole identity was that. It's the same people who focus so much on the way they look, yeah. you know, and do plastic surgery and everything else. So their whole identity is like uh, when they were younger, you're so beautiful. But now you're losing your look. So who are you now? Yeah. Instead of just like, well, what about this person that can just enjoy life enjoy today enjoy tomorrow embrace this right. be accepting be tolerant you yeah. know of people and everything else i think plays such a bigger role in all this absolutely know? when i think it's it's like a dangerous road to walk especially like the commercial artist path because you yeah. can't help but like you have to put food on the table yeah you have to seek out higher paying sure. jobs and you have to have kids you know you have yeah. to make money and that requires a certain amount of giving up some of that ideal for yeah like you have to get the job yeah you know? right right you have to have you know but i'm like even my position now <clears throat> recruiting looking at oh, i'm looking at artist portfolios all yeah. day long you know for specific needs but i'm looking at a lot of portfolios where the draftsmanship skill just isn't there and it's yeah. where you do need to this is an industry you want to get into right. you do need to step it up yeah. you know you do need you are going to have but where are those sacrifices can you stop binge watching you right. know tv when you go to put aside the video games you yeah. know it's like what what else are you doing in your life that you feel is just taking up so much of your time that you're not spending the time really on this chosen craft that you want to get into and i would always encourage everyone to up their skill level yeah. you know i mean just if you want to be an artist but again don't do it to the point where you become so obsessive that you check out from life, you yeah. know, because then you get burnt out, you get depressed, you get all these other aspects are happening in your life where it's just like you got to have the balance. Absolutely. Well, I think the balance is like the most important part. I mean, for a, a while, I thought that pers the pursuit of art was was completely good. Like yeah. there was there was no dark side to pursue yeah. it because it, it, you know, it's like you're not doing drugs, you're not yeah. partying, you're not doing anything that's hurting anybody. You're just making beautiful things, but. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think, um, again, it's it, it's almost like everyone who's pursuing the path of professional art has to walk down the yeah. dark path in yeah. order to get, you know, past it. And, sure. You know. Yeah, I think so. I, th I, I think you have to be able to witness it because I know when I was younger, you're, we're hungry. Yeah. You know, there's a hunger that's just like, wow, you know, just like yeah. to make a life and a living as an artist, I think is a very special thing. Yeah. You know, if you can do it. And I think there's so many artists pursuing that. And then you watch and see some of your heroes and go, wow, they're doing it. Yeah. Wow, I want to be like that. I want to 
I want to have that studio like that, yeah. you know, and it becomes this idea. Yeah. But I think also you get to a certain level where I almost think the journey of the artist is you're, you're hungry, you're learning, you gain the knowledge, you use the knowledge, but then you give back the knowledge, you know, then you become a teacher. It becomes this cycle, you know, which I think um, is worthwhile because I, I get always so sad when I hear of these artists when they die, these legends, and they're older, but yet there's no, there's no video footage of them. Yeah. You know, there's no training book. There was no art of there. Yeah. You know, there was. The, you see their artwork in books. You know, they illustrated. But, you know, could you imagine if you had uh, uh, tutorials from 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 Frank Fazetta or Sergeant, yeah, or yeah. Sergeant, yeah. or right. Lion Decker, or Rockwell? You know, I mean, Rockwell did a lot of stuff with yeah. his. Actually, he 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 was teaching with the right. famous artist course and things. But some of these people, they they like they're gone, and that's it. It's like, oh man, all that knowledge just. It's no longer here anymore. Absolutely, and I think people might pay ten thousand dollars for access to a John Singer Sargent painting. Right? Course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like you, a, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, if it yeah. existed. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't know. I, I think all this stuff is complicated. You know, it's like um, there is the side of pursuing the, um, I guess, the glory and the greatness and all that kind of stuff, and then there's the like living your life. Side yeah. of it, you yeah. know, yeah. and I think it's like I, as somebody who you know went through the gauntlet of working in studios and you know go, having some of the glory and stuff. Yeah. How how have you found uh, find like how have you been successful in finding balance in your life and like moving towards like taking care of your kids? And, yeah. So I like I mentioned one of them was just making the decision to not be working in the studio system and not being always the lead designer yeah. and showing up and doing all that by just by working from home and making yeah. that commitment to stay at home. So that was a big part of it. And um, I th think for me, it was just an awareness. I've always been I've loved philosophy. I read yeah. a lot of books and um, oh, I love documentaries and I'm always yeah. looking at other people's lives. And so what I'm always just taking in is observation as an artist should. Yeah. We should always be observing, you know, and it's not just for our art, but also our life. And I've just found that balance. And I always find it, too. It's exhausting when you get to that point. If you're, you know, because everyone's trying to pull your time and everyone wants, hey, go here and show up at this event and do this. And you just, it becomes just, oh, you know, here's another, another get together of people that, you know, in all honesty, I don't necessarily even want to hang out with these people. They're not my people, you know, and, and it just, there, there is a lot of just ego and there's a lot of stuff where you just make that decision where it doesn't matter, yeah. you know, to me. Again, you just realize what, what matters in life. And I think having good health, yeah. matters a huge deal you right. know having that free time in your life matters a huge deal having good relationships not being married three four five times you yeah. know matters you know there's yeah. so many things that I just appreciate about life yeah. um, that it's just to me uh, that but there was that obsession I'll never say that I never had that obsession for art I was striving that I did want to be the best at what I did but I was yeah. never in a place of I never compared myself to the point where I think too many people compare themselves now yeah. where that's the, the that's what sort of pulls them into a dark funk or I, I, I'm working so hard and I post this and I'm not getting enough likes on social media right, right? and it's just like you have all that and that's going to affect them as opposed to just you find like if you just find out what it is you enjoy doing yeah. what do you enjoy doing and focus on that and work on that and if it's important to you to get better at something get better at something but i feel like you know, you're just going to enjoy the process a lot more you know just be be active Absolutely. You know? don't be lazy yeah. don't procrastinate hey guys sorry to interrupt the conversation i just wanted to take a second to say this episode is sponsored by men's map it's all metal dory's painting course that he released last year where he goes through his step-by-step -step process for teaching you guys how to digitally paint he starts with basic cubes and then moves on to more complex shapes like portraits and figures. And then he shows you how to use those for things like concept art and complex illustrations. He teaches his entire curriculum for what he'd be teaching at a real college like Art Center or Cal Arts or something, but at a fraction of the cost. So if you were to go to Art Center, you'd be spending three or four thousand dollars on a class, but if you take it with Ahmed, you get to learn everything that he would teach inside the actual class environment. Which to me is way better because one, you get to keep the actual access to the class after you finish the course. Whereas with a college, after the end of the 10 weeks or 15 weeks or whatever, you don't get to rewatch the episodes. It just, it just disappears, you know? And it also costs 10 times as much. 
when it comes to trying to promote things and sponsors for this podcast, I really only want to try and promote things that I believe in. And I think Ahmed Aldori is one of my favorite artists and teachers, and he's been pretty helpful to me in my development as an artist. I think that his painting course is one of the best ones out there, and I hope you guys check it out. Well, and I, I think it's, um, I found that the people that are generally more successful are generally the people that are more self-motivated. Yeah. You know, something that's more internal. Like, yeah. I don't think, I think external motivation is, is good for short bursts of passion, you yeah. know? Um, it gets you pumped up, but over the long term, it eats you alive, I yeah. think, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that not enough people give themselves permission to enjoy the things that, it, that, that, that they enjoy, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like everyone wants to, like, work on Star Wars or something. Right. You know, so like, right. oh, so I should work on Star Wars yeah, or something, right. you know? Yeah, right, right, right. And if I work on Star Wars and I'm a Star Wars artist, now I can tell someone I yeah. worked on Star Wars. And if I tell them, well, now they're going to look at me as the, something bigger and better. Absolutely. You know, and then it can, but becomes this perception, but not thinking about the fact that you're working these crazy long hours. You know, it's always funny to me when you look at the people on, uh, you know, at the award ceremonies, this, they, they win their Oscar. You know, yeah. I want to thank you and I thank my wife and my kids for putting up with me and all those late nights and yeah. me not being home and <laughs> right. being there for dinner and right. everything so you missed out on life for what a little golden statue right, right. you know so, an uh, award for, for, for people to talk about you so to, to be on some list somewhere it's right like, yeah, be on yeah. some list and right. it's like and that's never appealed to me ever yeah. you know ever it's just I just don't think that's the way I think you got to do things for for you you know yeah yeah well I, I think like I, I have sought the darker path of like, you know, seeking external validation yeah. where I was wanting, I was doing things the way I was told I should yeah. do things, you know. And I've been living in vans like this for like almost two years now. Okay. I spent about six months last year just driving to New York and back, wandering around national parks. Yeah, and, yeah. God, and, what an experience. It was incredible. Though, and Holy moly. Just seeing how, like, I don't know, I was way happier being by myself, like peeing in bottles, yeah. you know, sleeping in Walmart parking lots. Right, right. Than I ever was like, at these like fancy business dinners yeah. and stuff oh and, yeah yeah you know, and it's like oh man it's like what like I, I almost had like an existential crisis it's like this was right in front of me the entire time right. and I, I chose not to take it yeah because I was I was like seduced by yeah. this other this other yeah. path that I could have walked down well and that's what these phones and everything are doing to yeah. people constantly every day it's becoming their existence and their and, and ident their identity and who they are as opposed to like one of my students recently you know, he's been trying to get work for a long time. And I said, and, I, and he's been doing awesome work. And I said, um, you know, it's it's coming, you know, it's just yeah. a matter of time. You've got to believe in that, you know. No, you can, things don't just grow overnight, you know. It's just, it takes time and the nurturing, and you're nurturing, and you're putting in the time, it's going to happen. He ended up something happening where he lost his, uh, his, 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 uh, his account, so something got hacked or yeah. he lost his phone. There was something that happened, so all of a sudden he has no social media. And it was the perfect blessing that happened for him. By him not worrying about posting every day and doing all this other stuff, he was able to concentrate more on what he was doing. And lo and behold, without social media and everything, he ended up still getting a job. Yeah. So now he got this job, he's super happy. And he's just like, man, I'm not even going to go back. I was yeah. just putting so much pressure on that, trying to build you know, all this up and thinking I had to do this all the time when really... It was, you know, it was the best thing that happened. Another friend of mine, he lost his phone. He said it was the greatest thing that ever happened. Yeah. You know, to him just open up this freedom. Yeah. You know, and I think, again, we're just getting, you know, I remember when I used to sketch, go out sketching all the time. You'd go and people were either just sitting and observing. Otherwise, they had a newspaper in their hand or a magazine yeah. or they're drinking their coffee or they're doing something now. Everyone's hand is just down like this 24 7. They're sitting next to their friends, their family, everyone at the dinner tables. They're all on this phone. It's this, yeah. this constant thing. Stimulation. It's just like, yeah. holy moly, what have we become? Well, and I, I, my dad used to tell me about the Charlie Brown Christmas special when he was a kid. And yeah. the Charlie Brown Christmas special was on for 20 minutes a year. And if you missed it, you missed it for the entire year. You know? Oh, now it's like we have yeah. access to that times a trillion. Yeah, you know? yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, it's like Alexandria's library or something. It's yeah. like you have access to every single piece of information right. you could possibly imagine. All you know? the time. You're being yeah. sucked in so many different places. And it's like um, the only thing limiting somebody from 
becoming exactly what they want to be is their attention almost. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's purely their attention. It really is. It's, it really is. It's how much effort and time are you going to put into this area? Otherwise, you decide, you know what, I'm going to do this. And that's for myself. I have a handwritten calendar. Yeah. I don't keep anything digital on my phone. I just have this physical calendar right by my desk where I know every day what day to day is. And um, I, I limit myself. I'm going to do about maybe five things or so that are that are on there and uh from that i accomplish my task and now i can you know move on yeah and i think that's the important thing absolutely well and i think it being physical is an important part of like i would like the part like if i were to have uh, a thing like that i'd be like oh it'd be easier to have it on my phone and i would convince myself to put it on my phone yeah and then that would be just myself tricking myself just to get on social media yeah just right on instagram right you know? right exactly <laughs> and i i think it's like the smartest people in the world right now aren't focused on like uh, curing cancer or spaceships or any of that kind of yeah. stuff. It's the smartest people in the world, like the Albert Einsteins, are working as hard as they possibly can to get people to click on as many ads as they can. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, yeah. And to be in this, and it, to increase the screen time on their phones. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's it. It's kind of crazy, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's we're living in a whole new world, and it's yeah. scary to think about. You know, the next five years or ten years from now, where it's going to be, where there's going to be the holograms and everything right, else, right. and it's going to be taking up more of our attention. Take it know? completely indistinguishable from reality. Right. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a wild, wild ride. But yeah. I, I think as long again, I, I think the most important thing is just try to find that thing that you know fills your gut you know go with your gut you know we've got to go with our gut you yeah. know a lot of the times and just like what's what's the right choice what's the right path and that's where for me where my calling was i want to do something bigger than for myself that well, there's got to be a greater purpose yeah. you know it can't just be me getting better at my artwork and working on my art form and working on the next show and the next show and the next show and staying and i, I just believe in having a life and letting it be this tremendous journey of yeah. experience you know you're doing this in the van I went backpacking with my brother with just a little backpack around the world for nine months you yeah. know and just the best thing I ever did in my life was yeah. have this that experience and these are the things that at the end if you're going to tell anyone well maybe you'll tell it to your great grandkids yeah. one day about this great journey you once had adventure. you know yeah, yeah. some big adventure right. that you experienced Absolutely. Yeah. Well, a question that I ask everybody is would you be doing exactly the same thing you're doing right now if you had a billion dollars you know and yeah. I think that it's like if you have a billion dollars, that means you're suddenly the probably the most successful yeah. person in your yeah. social group. You can you have money yeah. to solve every single problem right. you could ever possibly yeah. imagine, yeah. and you have the money to like be externally validated until yeah. the end of time. Yeah. Do you still like I don't know like work studio jobs? Yeah. Do you still do, you know, post to Instagram? Do you still do all these yeah. other things? And the answer for a lot of people is probably no. If they, yeah. didn't, if they had all the validation and money in the world, yeah. would they still be spending their day doing? what they're doing most of the time yeah. you know for me i i think i'd be spending my time just teaching it would be yeah. all about i would set up more i have thought about it like i would set up a big giant school that i'm not charging people to come to yeah. you know that i'd be able to pay the teachers to either come or just you know myself teaching and allow people just to come and use this resource and yeah. i think i'd I'd want to spend, if I had that sort of money, I'd for sure just want to be, be more philanthropist in a yeah. way. I'd want to be helping communities somehow do something. Yeah. You know, I think that drives me nuts sometimes when you, when you hear like someone spent like $30,000 on a purse. Right. I'm like, wow, man, it's man, crazy. I fed a whole village <laughs> yeah, somewhere, you know, it's just like that stuff drives me nuts. But right. um, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I, I wouldn't be. But I'm not doing it right now. I don't work in a studio as yeah. a studio job. I think I'm doing, I, and I and I would do this. I'd be I'd, if I could. If I had billion dollars and was able to be a recruiter. Still, that would be what I want to do. That'd be yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think it's once you answer that question, like, what would I be doing with a billion dollars? You kind of answer like, what you want. You know? Yeah. What do you want from life? Right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Like, I think once you have a billion dollars, it's like you can buy. You can buy anything you want. You yeah. Can have a private jet. You could do. You know. Sure. And yeah. it's like, but. But like, eventually you lose. You know, be like, eh, been there, done that, and I think eventually just lose lose the interest. You yeah. know, it's um, you know, I remember a long time ago. I was talking to someone and, you know, my kids used to love going to like, just, we would go to bouncy house and, yeah. you know, they're doing on the bouncy house, go to a kid's party and, you know, on the, you know, fun house bounce thing. 
and then I'm at Costco and all of a sudden they're selling one you yeah. know you could buy one oh man I could buy one for like a couple hundred bucks yeah. so when I bought one and she I remember her saying like why would you do that it's gonna take all the fun out of the next bouncy house they ever go to because they got it all the time yeah. you know and it's true it's real all of a sudden I got this bouncy house well now you got it all the time it's not as fun anymore yeah. so sometimes when we have stuff all the time it's just not as fun. I think there is something exciting about trying to achieve something. I think it's the reason why you see a lot of stories of uh, kids who have been given everything, you know, in their life, just given that silver spoon, yeah. lack ambition. Yeah, it, what's well, the, and they, know, don't, they lack purpose. Yeah, they lack meaning, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the what's the point? What, what do I need to work for? What do I need to do this for? So I think it's very important to learn how to you know work your way up to those people who just like win the lotto why do they go through it all and spend it they don't know what to you know they've never because now it's just given to them they never you know experience this like it's interesting well and, it, and i was thinking about this last year it's like the van the previous van i bought was four thousand dollars yeah yeah and one hundred and eighty thousand miles on it and i could couldn't stand like i had to like walk oh, around yeah, okay, yeah like yeah. like if, if we were in it right now you would be, be like <laughs> yeah okay and it's like I don't know. I wouldn't change that for the world. I yeah. think that, like, that's what I could have managed at that moment. And me having a billion dollars would have taken that experience away from me. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's like almost having a billion dollars closes you off to a certain way of living yeah. that might actually be more, more meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not so like, of course, like, it, I like it'd be nice to have a billion dollars. Sure. Sure. But there, there's like a price to it. Yeah. You, know? you miss out. You miss out on the the climb, and yeah. I think the climb is extremely important. There's, yeah, um, yeah I've, I've read just mo so many books, and I just I'm just remembering just one about just the the actor that you know wants to you know all of a sudden just gets all the roles you want before you're truly prepared. Like yeah. if all of a sudden, say I had. You know, my dad was a big famous actor and I could just walk just straight into a role of acting. Yeah. I'm going to miss out on all those just g getting the rejection like, or just going through that school of just really learning my profession right. to, to the point of really getting gaining that experience. And again, the more experience we can gain, yeah. whether it's good, bad and the ugly... It's gonna. It forms us. It makes us who we are. I, I think sometimes these people, who are uh, just some of these philosophers, like one of my favorites was the guy Dr. Dwayne Dyer. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he uh, just did so many things and helped so many people. But his childhood was the worst thing he yeah. could have ever experienced or heard of in his life. But yeah. he made the choice just to like. And had he not gone through that, would he have been the great teacher that he became? Probably not. You know, there would have been nothing to pull from you know on that yeah have you ever read man's search for meaning by uh, oh yeah. Yeah, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 by uh, victor frankl yeah that that book yeah. is amazing yeah. i mean it's yeah. like like you hear i see people around southern california who complain about their lives and it, it, it i obviously problems are about perspective yeah. but it's like you can go through the holocaust and yeah. see your, your wife and family yeah. die yeah. and you could still find meaning in your life right. and it's yeah. like you know how much of that is a choice versus how much of it is like destiny and yeah, it's, i think that yeah the part of the harsh reality of being a human being is yeah. that a lot of it is choice you know yeah and like what he talked about was the why yeah. you know over the how like why so the the survive the people at the camps where they were just trying to figure out how to survive i need food i need this they didn't kind of make it as far as the ones who were just knew why why do i want to make it through this so i think that's always seems to be the question it's like yeah why are you doing this because i think once you discover that you always figure out the how yeah if i know why you know it's like uh you know i just want to know you know why i want to travel from point a to point b for your purposes of why well now you know that now okay well now let me research how right who else has done it who's yeah. been there before what, what are things that i should look for absolutely you know and i think that's important yeah yeah and it, i think it's um you know the billion dollar questions i think at least for me it's helped me with the why yeah know? it's like you know um like i'm sure if like if, if your family's health was on the line you would run an ultra marathon right you know, you yeah would do anything, right? yeah yeah and it's i think it's like a um i don't know i think that's part of the importance of, of the struggle is that it gives you i don't know some amount of why no yeah matter what, yeah you know? as, as i think as long as you have an awareness and acceptance of the fact that you're struggling that you're going through this and not letting it shut you down yeah. you know where i think a lot of people will give up very easily and they'll just quit you know they're yeah. going through the struggle instead of you know hey i, I 
I can, I, I got to think of another way around this. Yeah. There's got to be something. I, I got to reach out to that person. I got to try this. I got to show up there. And just Thank knowing you. that there, there's hope, I think, as long as you're willing to nurture it. Absolutely. Like, again, with a plant, with a tree, the minute you stop watering it, and if it needs that, well, it's a goner. But yeah. if, even if that tree is, is, is dying right. and you water it, and it always fascinates me when I drive by places that have been and there's been a lot in this area you know that burnt down you know yeah. just the the mountains I mean, there's always fires here every year and all of a sudden all the trees are gone all the grass everything's dead it was killed it's yeah. black and it's charred yet all of a sudden by next season there's a little flower popping up and the grass starts to come and then you drive by and the whole mountain is green again yeah. so i always believe that where there's death there's life you know Absolutely. and i believe in this cycle and i think so you never allow yourself to get to that place where it's just completely over yeah. it's not you just gotta use your patience you gotta try some new way of nurturing something and just putting that water back on it and just igniting it somehow yeah. and um again again what's important to you and i and i think the bottom line is we all think that people truly care yeah. you know and they just don't you know they just don't i think what people care about is their their life and their surroundings but what other people how other people judge you or perceive you people don't care yeah. you know it's just like even if you mess up you know you're gonna mess up but you know six months later it's all forgotten right it's just like then you move on but some people you can choose to hold on to it forever and just be tormented by it otherwise you can say it's time to move on so i think having an awareness yeah. about your situation is vital absolutely you know? Well, I, I think it takes perspective, and I think it, it takes some amount of faith. You know, yeah. it takes like a, I, and, and again, I think it goes back to not tying your identity to your successes or yeah. failures. You yeah. know? I was talking to a friend about this, where he said, in order to get rid of feeling bad when he does a bad piece of art, he had to give up feeling good when he does a great piece of art. Mm. You know, it's like he said when he felt like he had done a great piece of artwork, he feel like, oh, I've finally become a good artist. I yeah. Can finally, rest. I can right. finally, you know, I've made it. Yeah. And then when he did a bad piece of artwork, he's like, oh, I. I would lie to myself. That right, was just once, right. once, and you know, right, right. can't, can't yeah, recreate yeah. that, you know? The whole imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah, like and it was a vicious in. back and forth instead of being in the middle of, like, yeah. you know, I did that, and that's it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Looking at kind of just, you yeah. know, as, like, objectively. You I know? think, you know, we have our good days and bad days as artists. We can't, you know, there's very few people that are going to just kind of hit it every single time you know we know some of those you know but it's very rare with you can go straight you know ink to the paper boom 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 oh my god just boom but yeah. again what what's what's even deeper what's beyond that you know what's going on mentally what's going on physically are there other Absolutely. things going on who knows well and I, I found that there's almost like this uh, I don't know uh, cycle of an artist that I've, that I've noticed is that there's like as as a young person it starts out as just pure passion and wanting to like be part of the group yeah. and then eventually they get part of that glory and they enjoy it for a little bit and then it, it kind of sours a little bit yeah and then they have to find a why that's deeper than just the glory right you know and yeah. it's like a it is almost like that that forest burning down it's like you see this beautiful forest yeah you get there it's not exactly what you thought it was going to be and you have to change your brain to yeah. see it differently essentially yeah you know? yeah absolutely um in a, in a, and you're for, you're familiar with the hero's journey yeah absolutely yeah 100%. just i mean that's uh, that's what it just kind of comes down to yeah, just yeah. on the on the search that we're just going and we've got to go on that you know cycle and that journey to all of a sudden we come back afterwards right. and go wow it was here all along yeah, yeah. right what i was aiming for what i was searching for all i ever wanted was this yeah. you know yeah. We, we were listening to the alchemist on the way oh yeah, yeah yeah very cool yeah. nice yeah yeah, yeah it's one of my a good books. ones yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, that's the that's thing. If you're open to listening to those and being receptive to it, I think we can gain so much knowledge from hearing these other stories yeah. and opening, you know, and Joseph Campbell and all these guys just like really listening and paying attention yeah, to it and, and, and j just not that instead of, oh, it can never happen to me, you yeah. know, why would it happen for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I found that like traveling has opened up. Like I, I was a really shy kid growing up. Like I had terrible social anxiety. Okay. You know. And now I live in a van and I spend my life just talking to people. Yeah. You know? yeah <laughs> it's like yeah. for for Proco, that's like my job. I just yeah. like reach out so to people. So cool. And, 
you know, like when I was like 16, my dad ordered me pizza and I couldn't open the door because I was too anxious to talk to the pizza guy. Oh you know? my gosh. And it's wow. like now, now I'm doing this whole van thing. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. It's like, what a yeah. strange path it's been, you know? Yeah. It's forever changing. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we don't have to, what it was our blood cells and everything changes like every seven years, yeah. you know? So it's, we're still never the same being truly after seven years, you yeah. know, we're allowed to change. We don't yeah. have to just, okay, I was this so I have to be this, have this thing. He said, because I had anxiety when I was a kid. This is right. my story, yeah. right? And we cling to those. This has to be the story forever. Like, I think a lot of things that are distracting to me that I don't always like hearing when I just say, you know, and I'm ne like mental health is a huge thing. Yeah. But there's those times where people that make this the excuse, oh, I got ADHD, you know, right. so I can't. Therefore, I, it never works out because I got ADHD, you know. But it's like, well, you can use that as a crutch or you can use it as a benefit. You know, yeah. it's like, I, I have ADHD, but I will never talk about it. I never tell people about it. I struggled all through school academically. I would just couldn't keep up. I, I'm dyslexic and I'm always writing my words and everything backwards and letters backwards. I never hold use it as a crutch. It's yeah. just like, it kind of probably helped me. It helped me by not being so focused all the time, you know, that it was hard, but that I felt like I had to keep moving on and trying new things. And it's like, I could have got locked into a position. It's the reason I could never animate, you yeah. know, I just, I just could, the patient, having the patience for it and everything, I just couldn't do it. But well, had I done that, well, then would I just been the animator and just right. done that my whole life and maybe never published my own books and never created this and never went there and never did that, you know? There's a lot of different things that Absolutely. could have been a uh, result had I just used it instead of just like, you know, this is me. This, this is, is what you I, are, Yeah, right? this is what I do. You know? And I and, I mean, for me, it's like, um, like I wish this van was more built out. You know, it's like, I, it, like there's a version of it that would be nicer. It's yeah. Like maybe I have an, a, a, an epic RV or something. Right. Or I have a private jet or yeah, a helicopter. Yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Up the person yeah. That, you know, it's right. like, <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, maybe I should wait until it's as exactly until I have the fucking helicopter. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, right. if I had the helicopter, I would never do it because I'll never have a helicopter. Right. <laughs> you know, I'd have to like start. I'd have to earn the money to buy a helicopter. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's like, um, it, it's it would be co cooler if it was a helicopter, but then there's the reality of it. You know. Right. It's like, um, like if if I just waited for what I wanted it to be would never happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that like I've over the past few years have gotten into the habit of just trying to do things and not wait for permission. Right. Or any from yeah. anybody. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, so, like I have plenty of people like, like Marshall Vandruff when I told him I was going to do yeah. the van thing. He's like, you're going to get killed, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> someone's going to abduct you. <laughs> yeah, yeah you absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, nothing yeah, bad yeah. happened yeah. to me so far. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you can put fears on things and limitations as to mm -hmm. why this won't work out. You could trick yourself as to why not to do something. Again, make excuses. And then that's how often a lot of stuff never gets done. Yeah. Because people have that. Uh, that anxiety, that fear of what it's, it's always comes to fear. You yeah. know, what's stopping you? Oh, the fear of doing this, fear of doing that. What if this? What if that? It's creating all these stories. One of my favorite quotes that I say a thousand times. Pe people are tired of me saying it, but by um, by um, uh, Mark Twain said, "I've had many problems in my life, many of which have never occurred." You know, yeah. because it was all just oh, internal absolutely. problems yeah, in yeah. your head, and they right. didn't occur. Oh my God! If what if I do this and. You know, I asked this artist to come and interview him, and then this happens. It's just like, and then all of a sudden at the end, hey man, that worked out awesome. That yeah, was yeah. great, right? It's all these scenarios instead of just letting things manifest the way they're gonna manifest. Actually, and being happen. okay either way. Yeah, being okay either way. You know, and and sometimes it depends how you look at it. You know, it depends how where, where you lie in your faith, whatever that may be. Is maybe it's like you know, well, this happened for a reason. Yeah. You know, it went down this way for a reason. Who's yeah. to say why? But it, it right. was, you know, and um, and not living a life of regrets. And I think that's the thing that people realize having so much fear right. from stopping them from doing A, B, and C is that yeah. at the end of the day, they go, God, what did I give up on? What did I miss out on? Yeah. You know, because of that. Yeah, and I, I think it's always fear. It's 100% yeah, always fear. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like a, I think everyone's dream to right in front of them is just the fear of, like of loss or something that, that yeah. holds people back it's fear know? of loss this fear of you know not making enough not having this there's so many there's napoleon hill if you're familiar oh, with yeah, him yeah. yeah just written some great 
great books and uh, he talks about this like the seven fears you know and I, I don't know them all off but he talks about you know all these again these legitimate fears yeah. and one thing that really stuck with me was there's a, if you ever get a chance to look it up many of the listeners it was put out by um, hospice nurses. Yeah. So all these uh, hospice nurses who were going to be with the dying, you know, these people have just a month or so left. Yeah. And so it was called the top 10 regrets of the dying. Yeah. And so there's this list that they wrote of all these people. It was almost like a science, yeah. you know, that this people said the exact same thing. You know, I, I wish I didn't work as hard. I right. wish I, I wish I, I didn't listen to other people's opinions so much. Yeah. I wish this, I wish that. And then it's like, well, yeah, you know, these are the sort of like, that's people are saying on their deathbeds. Yeah. Pay attention to that because can Absolutely. you make that change now so that you don't have to be one of have one of those top ten regrets when you're dying? Because yeah. one day you're gonna die. Yeah. You know, it's just the facts of life. You don't know how. You hope that it's a good way. You hope you've had a long life. You hope that you know all these other things happen. But yeah, it's, it's the fear and the regret that is what holds people back from just just try, yeah. just try, right. see what happens. Yeah, well, I think part of the tragedy is that. Like, especially in our culture, like us as Americans, yeah. like we're not going to die, right? It's like, like if somebody, if you take a big risk, you're going to be able to at least feed yourself. People are going to go, right, you. right. You're going to have clean water. Yeah, you know, right. You, you know, you're going to, at least most of the time, like, obviously it's not 100% of the time. You might sure. be diabetic. Yeah, time, right, you know? right. But for most people, it's like you're probably going to survive the risk, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think it's like, um, the fear comes from not from like reasonable fear it's like the identity thing again yeah. you know it's like yeah. maybe I am working at a studio and I really want to like go try and do my own graphic novel or yeah. cartoon or something but I'm afraid of quitting because that means I won't be able to be a principal artist right or you know? yeah exactly yeah I remember when I went backpacking around the world like what I learned and I was in so many different countries just just third world just you know a lot of people not even a pot to piss in you know yeah. like really bad yeah. and then just looking at that not only just realizing wow how grateful I am to be doing what I'm doing and traveling and just doing this but also I thought my biggest fear was being an artist what if things don't work out what yeah. if I don't get uh, become an illustrator what if pe all the people were right that artists are just a dime a dozen and it's so hard to make a land all these right. things but I realized after that trip that and especially living in America I'll never be in that situation I have enough friends and family to where if I couldn't make it, I, if I needed to crash on someone's couch, I'm sure there's going to be someone that's going to let me crash on their couch, you know, and enough friends to help me through to eventually get myself up and running again, yeah. to not be that, I'll never be that person that's standing on, you know, on, on the freeway entrance, just shaking a cup and, you know, with the sign, it's just like, I know that about myself, you yeah. know, that I'm going to try everything and anything I can yeah. to get myself out of that. And yeah. I think we, we get tested, you know, but it's, Sometimes that's what it requires is to get tested in such a way before you'll even, you know, really, you don't even know your own strength sometimes, you know, because you, you, you become complacent and you take things for granted and Absolutely. you don't realize, wow, I, I could actually do this. I can actually live like this. Yeah, yeah and you underestimate yourself. And it, yeah. You, you know, um, yeah. you get used to whatever situation that you're in, whether it's super rich or super yeah. poor. And I think yeah. that, like... I mean, I this this van is about a hundred square feet or something, and I've gotten used to living in this thing. Yeah. You know? Like again, I shower at the gym and at friends' houses. Yeah. And I pee in public bathrooms. So right. Okay. That's, yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's not as comfortable as having a mega mega mansion or something. Sure. It's right. Like, I don't really care either yeah. way. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, but you're getting to experience something that again you don't know who the people you're gonna meet and yeah. encounter and these this like a it's a real. It's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. I got a friend who does. He lives in his um, little mobile, um, little RV, yeah. you know, with him and his girlfriend, with his wife and his kid, yeah. and they just travel doing fairs, doing caricatures yeah. everywhere, and they just go. and He makes a great living, you yeah. know, kind of doing it, and just he travels all over the country. Yeah. He hires other artists, you know, brings them to the fairs, and yeah. it's just like loving it. I'm just yeah. like. You know, without all the expense and all the yeah. stuff, it's just like you realize, hey, I got food in my belly. 
I can shower when I go to shower, yeah. you know, I can, you get to experience things that yeah, otherwise instead of being trapped, meet people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you kind of miss out on this. Like, I, I'd, I'd love to do that. You know, I talk about it with my wife. Yeah, yeah. You know, where we just want to get like, an, once our kids are gone, you know, it's, yeah. we just want to get like a little RV and just travel. Yeah, just yeah. go there and see where we end up, see Absolutely. where we show up. 100%. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and I think it's that like, I don't know, something I, I realized last year when I was traveling so much, like, I don't know if I'll ever be in a place where I'm, like, in a dark place ever again, because I always know it's like, oh, I could just travel. You yeah. Know? It's like, yeah. I, it's not something that, like, I can lose. You right. Know? It's not something that could be taken away from yeah. me in the same yeah. way that a job or a, you know, an Instagram account. Or, right, you know, right. Like, I was talking to s some people who, like, they lost their Instagram accounts or something, and they had an emotional reaction to right. it. And it's like, wow, it's like, I, I totally understand the, oh, sorry, the camera died. Um, I understand the emotional reaction because people s spend so much time cultivating their followings and stuff. Yeah. But at a certain point, it's like, um, if somebody is like crying or, you know, emotionally distraught because they lost their Instagram account, it's almost like, again, I think it's uh, tragic. It's fundamentally pretty tragic. Sorry. Too. I do gotta upgrade these cameras soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I guess what I was saying is that, um, like, um, I found that no matter what I do, this like path of ultimate meaning and validation is always there right in front of me. Yeah. You know? Like if I can't afford to drive around in a car, I could do it by bike. Right. Or I can hitchhike. Yeah. Or I can like, yeah. you know, like just work on different farms yeah. around the world or so. You know, there's so many yeah. different ways of doing it. Yeah. It's like, oh man, like. Um, yeah. As then, long as you got the will. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I say, if there's, where there's a will, there's a way. And again, that's the, that's the thing, you yeah. know, that I got, I, I, you can do this and get that belief. And, and I think it's like, why not experience it? You know, I think people are so afraid of to try new experiences and do things and let stuff happen. And just like, to me, that's like the exciting thing about life yeah. is the spontaneity of it. Yeah. To let it, why, why do you have to live in the house with the white picket fence and have the dogs and the, you know, like, yeah. but what is that? You know, right. says who? Right. And it's not for everyone, you know? And then sometimes people, that that's what they do, but their whole life, I can't tell you the amount of people that I know that are successful you know, monetarily successful, right? Yeah. And, and just, they got their lives together, they got their house, they got their fair, they got their jobs, they got everything, but they hate their jobs yeah. and they're just doing it and they're gonna wait till they retire until they can actually really do something fun in their life and they just wait, you know? And it's just like, and there's so many people that live their life like that. It's like, is that what living's all about? You know, that doesn't sound so exciting. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like me. once I get this amount of resources or this particular yeah. job, then I can start living. My yeah, life, right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I think like the be happy then or be happy now yeah. is, is a really important thing to ask yourself. It's yeah. like, am I waiting for some external thing to have permission to start living yeah. my life? And, and most people are. And I think mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, it's the, the thing I've, and I'm sure you could agree with me, the thing I found about that's fundamental across everyone I've ever met traveling is that fundamental human suffering is universal. Yeah. You know, everyone has some horrible yeah. tragedy yeah. that has happened to them. Yeah. No matter who you are. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. like, you don't have to look that far into yeah. anybody's life. And it's, yeah. it's like, it's either existentially paralyzing yeah. or it's something that's like universally, it, 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 it so it unites you with everyone else around you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I think that that like that unification it, it allows you to have empathy for other people, and it allows you to have, to have empathy for yourself. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know where I'm really going with that. Well, yeah, yeah, I think I think it's just important to know that who was it? The author he said, uh, "Be yourself," because everyone else is already taken. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's just like, and that's what it comes down to. It's just like. Just be yourself. Stop yeah. trying to be sometimes something you're not. Stop trying to fit into this mold. Just can find that joy and happiness for you, and, and yeah. you got to find that for yourself. You right. know, there's no one way of 
doing it. There is no stamp and say, if you do this, I mean, I do remember reading a book uh, by the Dalai Lama and he yeah. said, you know, you want to find true happiness? You know, the art of happiness is uh, helping other people. Yeah. And so when you do that, you know, you realize, and I was already doing that and I realized that's always when I found the most joy yeah. in my life when I was helping other people. Yeah. And so you find that for yourself, you know, whatever that is, you know, maybe you're volunteering your time, maybe you're doing something again, but what, what is that? And we got to find that for ourselves, and it, it isn't just this stamp like right. that there is no similarities you absolutely know? yeah well and I, I think part of the weird thing about all this stuff is acknowledge like seeing those faults in myself where like when i was like i'd be in the grand canyon by myself in like one of the best places most beautiful places yeah. on the planet yeah and instead of like enjoying the hikes and just seeing the, the natural beauty of yeah. the grand canyon i'd be on my phone watching a, a youtube video right or something. right and it's like yeah, yeah. I, I was like watching a dumb youtube video of like cats and i was like what what am i doing like, yeah yeah like, you know and it's like it, it wasn't the place yeah it was me it was like yeah. just what i was seeing in the world right know? yeah and i was thinking it's like is everywhere like that is can you find incredible beauty in the most in, in like yeah. anywhere yeah and i found when you really like authentically look yeah. you know and you really make the sacrifice and yeah. go out take a walk whatever you will always find something of value yeah you know, no matter what oh yeah you know? absolutely it's like there was a quote it said pay attention on purpose to the yeah. present moment yeah. you know it's just like and that's what you do is people go on vacation yeah. and where are they they're on their phone yeah. or they're someplace else just like you know how was the how was the you know the hawaii yeah. yeah it was cool you know uh, I don't really remember much right. of it, you know. I was on the beach just looking at my phone most right. of the time or I was doing this or whatnot instead of just really just keeping your eyes open, looking around you and discovering, you know, yeah. things. To me, that's what, you know, the life's about. Well, and I found that you can travel physically, go to different... Like, you could go to Dubai and find a Starbucks and a cheeseburger. Sure. And have the same exact experience you'd have in Dubai yeah, as in like absolutely. Iowa or yeah. you know, wherever. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And Or you can go to Dubai and have a completely different cultural yeah. experience. And yeah. it's completely dependent on what you're willing to see, yeah. you know, and what yeah. you're willing to like confront in yeah, yourself. Yeah, it is. It's, are you, again, just put that laptop down, you know, put that phone down and just experience it. Well, I went to, with my family, we got, we were fortunate enough to live in Italy yeah. for a month. I was teaching out there, but they, yeah. we were living in a uh, part of the town where it was just all the locals yeah. so we got to really experience the low being a local in that life going to the market you know not having a car transportation and just yeah. really soaking it in and those are the memories that stick yeah. you know with you because again paying attention on purpose to the Absolutely. present moment yeah. that this is where I am this is what I'm doing I'm not thinking about what I got to do next week or what's happening now it's just like just stuff's gonna happen we don't we, we don't have control over anything we don't know yeah. we don't know what's gonna happen day to day yeah you know it's just if you let that get to you i think you're you you miss out you know you don't enjoy things just let it so, be let it be yeah yeah i, I think uh, uh traveling or just living my life in the way i've been living my life in the past few years is like it's it's confirmed my belief that a god exists yeah you know? it's like um, when you choose to see the beauty in the world, it's it's always there. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's, yeah. It, I think that that's my version of a faith. It's like yeah. if you just have faith in going on a walk or you know doing yeah. anything, just going on an adventure. Yeah, you know, yeah. Something is going to happen. Yeah, you know, that yeah. you will never expect. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, it's beautiful. I think it's uh, it's awesome. Yeah, you know that's what you want. You yeah. know, not Absolutely. being so caught up in. And I think again, and I know. As, as a teacher, and I know what everyone's, you know, searching for and wanting, you know, yeah. and Amy, but I still feel like that's why I always try to teach a form of mental health along right. with teaching. I don't think you can just teach art as just art. There's so much more that goes into it and just right. trying to have that awareness of just like mindset, you know, get in the right mindset. Right. And stuff that happens. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. 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 And I think it, it doesn't matter. I found that it doesn't matter how good of a technical artist you yeah. are. It matters what you're saying. You yeah, know? yeah. And I, I think I know that, like, I, I re like art. I think is just another fundamental fundamental way of communicating ideas. Yeah, you know? sure. And yeah. it doesn't matter how good of a draftsman you are if the ideas you're communicating don't have any substance to yeah. them. You know. Yeah. And I'm sure, like, you see these really rough drawings by George Lucas of Star Wars. Yeah. That have become some of the most iconic characters of all time. Yeah. And it's like. 
you know, it, the draftsman skills don't have to be there right. in order to communicate amazing ideas. Sure, yeah, because you, know? you can always hire someone else to flush yeah. that out, you yeah. know, if you need to. But yeah, to have the initial thing, no, it is. It's, yeah. it's the same thing just with drawing and just design and everything. It's all story, right? It's just yeah. like we want to have a message, you know, what makes, what made Rockwell so great, you know, it's his yeah. stories, you yeah. know, it's just like Lion Deck. It's just there's always a, a story when you look at something. Again, it can be the best illustration in the world, but if you want to just look at it as a technical thing, then, yeah. you know, fine. But yeah. it's, it's almost like sometimes where, it's not that I don't appreciate it, but if I just see someone do a portrait and it's like a photo, it looks yeah. exactly like, it's like, wow, man, that's a, a lot of hours and, right. and but for me, again, for someone else, it might resonate and be like, wow, you know, that's, a, um, for me, I'm just like, yeah, you yeah. know, it's just like, why? You know, well, and it's funny. It's like I, I would take some of my non-artist friends to the Met, right? Yeah. And we would go to the Sargent Room in the Met, and they'd be like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." And then it, they would see Washington crossing the Delaware yeah. at the Met, and they'd be like, "Oh, this is the greatest painting of all time." And I'm like, "No, Sargent, he's way yeah, better." Yeah, right. you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. oh man, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just strange. Yeah. You know? Again, it's a, it's a, it's a beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. You know, right? And it's just like what we what we feel is going to resonate with us and what is meaningful to us. You know, let it be. You yeah. know, it shouldn't be someone else telling you. You know, uh, I always think it's funny. You know, it's like that sister Wendy. She was an old nun. You ever yeah. hear of, hear of her? She's long gone now, but she used to have a show where she was an art critic and she'd go there and explain everything that the artist was thinking. Yeah. And as they went, it's like. How do yeah. you know what they know? It's like right? this is crazy, you yeah. know. It's just like, right. yeah, um, yeah. When I again, I think it's. Um, I, I, for, I, for, I was going to say something, and I forgot. Uh, I, 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 dang it! <laughs> uh, this always happens, <laughs> man. Um, I, I guess it's a. Uh, it's strange to see. It, I guess it's strange to meet some of my art heroes too, as yeah. well. Because I think part of me wants the people that I look up to most to not be people, you know, I almost want them to be like transcendent of anxiety and fear and all that kind of stuff. Cause if, if that means they're not affected by self doubt or any of that yeah. stuff, that means there's a point at which you can get to where you're immune to it. Right. And yeah. Part of the scary yeah, part yeah. is that you meet these people and they're not immune to it. Yeah. Know? And they're almost yeah. more susceptible to yeah. it than, than anyone else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, Again, I guess I guess the entire podcast is about figuring out, like, talking to professionals and figuring out, like, how do they, like, in spite of knowing all this stuff, trend, like, find that meaning and move past the anxieties and yeah. all this stuff. And I found that the answers are, are actually all very similar. It's like trust in yourself. Like, yeah. Do what you like doing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, like I essentially, like, love who you are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is. It, again, it's it's starting to not it's starting to be okay with being selfish in a way it's about self you know it's not worrying about what other people think or say about you you know it's just because it's it doesn't matter yeah. you know it's again are you doing your best and again a lot of us in in just life in general everyone's again just trying to provide for their families yeah. trying to make a life oh that's all i ever wanted was to make a life and a living as an artist and being able to support my family uh, doing my art and not having to worry about getting another job that was something that I hated and was miserable so I was fortunate enough to find this sketchbook just get passionate about art yeah. you know and that passion was you know was a gift but I also feel like my true gift is helping other people not just you know showing them art but trying to help them break beyond you know what it is that they're trying to achieve and Absolutely. then you've got to rely on that and find out what that gift is that you have and say what well, feels natural right you know what feels natural to you go with that instead of resisting and i think that's where a lot of people are always trying to resist yeah. what's actually happening and what's going on in the situation and this happened oh my god it's the end of the world and that happened and that's the end of the world there's all these situations like, what are you going to do about it? And if there's something you can do about it, no. then by all means try to do something about it. But stop resisting everything and just allow yourself just to flow with things. And I've found throughout my life, the more I just let myself just flow through all this, yeah. the easier it is. You know, Absolutely. Well, the, the, more su it is. the more success you might have, yeah. too. Yeah, I, yeah. I found part of the irony, like I used to define a master artist as somebody who could do everything as a draftsman. Right. But I found that, like, you know... I meet 
people that I consider masters that people other people might consider yeah. masters and I found oh they can't draw from their head or right. they could only draw from their head or right. you know and I found that like being a master means that, like you might be the world's best portrait or plain air painter yeah. but that doesn't mean you can do storyboarding or anything, right you know? sure sure and it's almost yeah. like being a master is like being okay with just being a plain air painter being right. okay with just yeah. being something you know yeah yeah like um I think part of the bad thing about growing up is like you start out as just formless potential you could be yeah as like a nine-year-old you Absolutely. could be a famous piano player or a firefighter or an astronaut yeah. or something yeah at a certain point you have to narrow in and become something specific yeah yeah so that means you have to give up being everything else and i think i don't think that narrowing ever stops yeah like you yeah will just continue to be more and more specific and um and I think that requires giving up, again, part of the ego. Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's letting, again, I, and, I, and I feel like, you know, what makes someone want to get up and climb uh, Mount Everest, yeah. you know, in the morning, you know, or run, get up at four in the morning and ride their bike and yeah. do 10 miles, you know, it's just like, and that's some people, they just got to do it. It's yeah. a feeling. And I think if we just started to rely and trust on our inner feelings, yeah. not more, and again, stop worrying about all the outside noise, right. what other people have accomplished, and what this person's doing, or what that person's doing, and just go, what do, what do I want to do? Yeah. You know, I want to get up. You know, you you might decide I want a helicopter. Well, yeah. then, if that's what you really want in life, yeah. some people will make that happen, and they're going to sure. do everything in their power to make that. But is that going to be important to you? You yeah. know, do I do I want to be sitting at a huge long dine, have a mansion where I got to have all these people working all day long cleaning up you know right. just fix it do i want to be sitting at a a table that like richie rich you know from one end to the next with all these candles in between and looking at my spouse or partner all the way across you is that what you want well then you're gonna have to do something to make that happen but otherwise you go what do you really need what do you want yeah. you know and uh Absolutely. if you determine you know simplicity is for me i i believe i love simplicity i've always have I've been very simple you know i don't want overly complicated things so I don't have to worry about it yeah. you know yeah well and I, I, I'm really into uh, Into the Wild oh yeah like Christopher McCandless yeah, and yeah. stuff and there's a there's a, a line from Mark Twain or something that he underlined in his book about a or the the, uh, the guy I can't remember uh, the guy who wrote about it but yeah um, it was uh, Mark Twain would go to these um, these dinners with famous people an infinite food feet like a feast beyond yeah um, like with the wealthy, like the most epic feast of all time, and he would leave feeling hungry, but then he would go and have a dinner in a very modest inn with his family, and he, he would say that that would be a lot more uh, fulfilling in both food yeah. and actual meaning than the epic, you know, the epic. Right, meaning, oh know? yeah, sure, sure. It's almost like most stressful to go to those sort of things, you know, when you go into these events where there's all the famous people, yeah. right, and everyone, it's just, there's so much more pressure, right. you know, it's just, it's it's almost like not as fun. Like, I yeah. personally don't enjoy going to them at all, you yeah. know, I want to go to a place where I could just hang out with just regular people, people who just like kick back, relax, and not worried so much about what other people are thinking about them and all this other stuff and just have real meaningful conversation, Yeah, absolutely. you know, is, is, is important. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's like, um, I think part of the danger is that I think that's always open to everyone at all times. It's yeah. just, I, again, it's uh, when, when you're at Comic-Con, when you're, when you're at any convention or yeah. any party or anything, it's like, I found that there's a part of myself that can't escape yeah. wanting to hang around certain people, be invited to certain right, parties. And right. It's like, I almost don't, I don't like myself when I go to conventions. Yeah. You know? yeah. I see myself treating people differently. And, Interesting. You know, yeah. Because, like, you only have four days to interact. Right. You know, right. You know, trying to just, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah, again, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about 120, by the way. Um, oh, is it? Okay, yeah, okay. You, you, you gotta get going? Or? Yeah, I, yeah, if we wanted to, uh, we, we could just, uh, like, sort of, like, wrap it up if there's anything that you oh, yeah, for sure. I wanted to. Well, uh, well, so I asked people to draw on this board. Okay, okay. Uh, would, you, would you have time? Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I have a marker. Uh, hey, hey, totally, if you don't want to, it's like. All right, this, no, no, that's cool. We got a Sharpie and. Let me see. This is, this is probably a black marker. This, this thing, it's this like a, a wider. In case there, maybe a thin one. I don't know what to do, a couple. 
かっていうし。<笑>はい。Uh, at any moment, like my now, it's just like I'm in, I find myself in like meetings, you know, all the time now where,、yeah. that, you know, it's sort of like, well, I, I had a lot more. Doing recruiter stuff?、Uh, yeah, all the recruiter stuff. And I, I like it, I really enjoy it. I'm getting just to see a whole different sort of like perspective,、yeah. you know, of the industry. So it's just kind of really, really cool.、Yeah. It's just where I used to have just a lot more of this. Open free time, it's like, oh no, I've got to be on a schedule now, you know,、yeah. where I was just、That's、always making up my own,、yeah. you know, schedule. Right.、Yeah. And I'm, sure, I'm sure that's been like a, an identity shift as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, it's fun, but it, it falls in line with exactly sort of like what I, what I want to be doing the next phase of my life, and that's what I like, sort of like. Expect, you know, I like, the, I like the idea of that. I like the idea of just kind of like floating into this whole new other realm, you know, because why not? Because、yeah. you can. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, have you ever thought about doing like a complete identity shift, like trying to be an astronaut or something? Or, yeah, you know, no, no, like no, not yet, not yet, <laughs> you know?、Yeah. You never know, you never know. Yeah. yeah. It's a really nice park here. Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was, we I, love yeah it. when we were driving in, I didn't expect it to be this, this lush. Yeah, it's beautiful. They've got a real nice、uh, over by the fountains over there. It's just it's really cool. It's very quiet, and there's never that many people around here. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny, I just think about this park. Like, I'm bringing my kids to my, this park when they were younger, and now they're older, and it's like、yeah. memories, you know? Not crazy, man. Have you lived here for a while?、Or? Yeah, I've been out in Simi Valley for about.、Uh, 20, about 20 years.、Yeah. Nice. I, I read that you're from England. Yeah, England yeah, yeah. originally. I, I lived、yeah. in Cambridge for about five months. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah I was in Northwest London. Okay, cool. Moved out to America when I was 10.、Okay. So that was a whole other experience, too, you know, just coming as a. As, a, as an immigrant to this country and not having, leaving all my friends behind and、yeah. everything else. It's just like, what a wild journey, you know, and I kind of like love that, just have, being able to. Again, experience something yeah, yeah, you know,、absolutely. new, something different. Yeah, you know, that's、absolutely. what it's all about.、Yeah. You know? Well, again, I appreciate、yeah. you doing this, man. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Thank、cool. you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Cool. Cool. <laughs> well, I'll cut it there. All right. <laughs>